Pastor Jerry here, Crossroads Church of Cleburne. It is so great to be with you here today for our daily reading. Uh, you can see I'm wearing my, my overalls today. I get a lot of kidding about being uh, Farmer Farmer Brown or Farmer Jerry when I wear these, but getting ready to do some yard work and get out there and get things cleaned up uh, today. But as we all should, starting out in the Word today, wanted to get my daily reading in, uh, starting first thing in the morning. It's a great way to start the day. So we finished Colossians yesterday, and we are going through Paul's prison epistles. And those are the letters that Paul wrote while he was in prison around 60 to 62 AD uh, while he was in Rome. And so this morning, we're going to read the last prison epistle. And then I think the daily readings from there will, will probably go either to Acts, where we're doing our... our uh, our weekly sermon series is in through the book of Acts now, or we're going to go to Matthew. So I'm not sure yet, but I'll decide by tomorrow and, and have that for you. And this morning, though, we're going to be going through Philemon. And Philemon is a very short personal letter where we saw the other letters Paul wrote in prison that we have were directed towards the church as a whole and um, relationships in the church and how to build up the church and how to, to live a life in Christ. Philemon is a personal letter, and it's on behalf of a, a believer who was a former slave, and his name was Onesimus. Onesimus was a slave of Philemon, and he actually went away, but he ran into Paul and uh, while he was in Rome and, and became a believer in Jesus Christ. Now, Philemon, his owner, is also a believer in Jesus Christ. So Paul writes this very personal letter for Onesimus to take to Philemon uh, when he goes back, when he goes out. And so it's exciting to see Paul actually says uh, that he would stand up and pay any debt that Onesimus has, you know, and, and the amazing thing about this is we're going to see in this letter and in Romans 1, 1, Paul calls himself a slave for Christ and a bondservant for Christ. So he knows what, what slavery means. He understands what slavery is and to be a slave. And he's petitioning for Onesimus to come to be able to come back to Philemon not as a not as a slave but as a fellow christian as a co-worker with philemon so without further ado i invite you to uh, read along on the screen pull out your your bible and read along in your bible or simply sit back and listen to today's reading which is philemon paul a prisoner for christ jesus and timothy our brother to philemon our brother beloved fellow worker and aphia our sister and archippus our fellow soldier, and the church in your house. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God always when I remember you in my prayers, because I hear of your love and of the faith that you have towards the Lord Jesus for all the saints. And I pray that sharing of your faith may become effective for the full knowledge of every good thing that is in us for the sake of Christ. For I have derived much joy and comfort from your love, my brother, because the hearts of the saints have been refreshed through you. Accordingly, though I am bold enough in Christ to command you to do what is required, yet for love's sake I prefer to appeal to you. I, Paul, an old man and now a prisoner for Christ Jesus, I appeal to you for my child Onesimus, whose father I became in my imprisonment. Formerly he was useless to you, but now he is indeed useful to you and to me. I am sending him back to you, sending my very heart. I would have been glad to keep him with me in order that he might serve me on your behalf during my imprisonment for the gospel. But I prefer to do nothing without your consent in order that your goodness might not be by compulsion, but of your own accord. For this perhaps is why he was parted from you for a while, that you might have him back forever. No longer as a bondservant, but more than a bondservant, as a beloved brother especially to me, but how much more to you, both in the flesh and in the Lord. So if you consider me your partner, receive him as you would receive me. If he has wronged you at all, or owes you nothing, charge that, oh, excuse me, or owes you anything, charge that to my account. I, Paul, write this with my own hand. I will repay it, to say nothing of your owing me even your own self. Yes, brother, I want some benefit from you in the Lord. Refresh my heart in Christ. Confident of your obedience, I write to you, 
knowing that you will do even more than I say. At the same time, prepare a guest room for me, for I am hoping that through your prayers I will be graciously given to you. Epaphras, my fellow prisoner in Christ Jesus, sends greetings to you. So does Mark, Aristarchus, Demas, and Luke, my fellow workers. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. So there we go. We see that Paul is uh, telling them, telling Philemon that, uh, you know, he he's loves Onesimus, that he's of much use, and that he's encouraging that Philemon take him back, not as a, as a slave, not as a bondservant anymore, but as a fellow believer in Christ, and to see Onesimus as he would see Paul. And then he says, I love this part, he says in 18, if he has wronged you at all or owes you anything, charge that to my account. Isn't that amazing that Paul is willing to take on Onesimus's charges, is willing to take on Onesimus's debt. You know, that's, that's a pretty Christian thing. He's doing this in order that Onesimus may come back to him as a full partner, brother in the Lord, a co-worker in Christ. And if you think about it, was there anybody who took on your debt? Was there anybody who took on your guilt? Uh, of course, Jesus Christ did. He took that, he took that sin debt that, you, that each one of us have, and he paid the price for that debt on the cross. So just as, as Christ did, we are to walk with one another, lift each other up, encourage one another. And if there's any way that we can, we can help one another and bring each other up, then we should do it. We should move forward in the Lord, always loving one another, encouraging one another, strengthening one another, and seeing each other as brothers and sisters in Christ. I pray that this is encouraging to you, that you would have a blessed day, and that you would um, be faithful in the Lord, and stay joyful today. May God bless you and keep you.